Let's talk about resources. So resources, they're your core of your CloudFormation templates and they're mandatory. Your CloudFormation template cannot work without the resources block. And the resources, as the name indicates, represent the different AWS components, it's just a synonym, that will be created and configured. And the resources are declared and they can reference each other. So you can link the resources together. For example, you can link a security group and an EC2 instance. AWS will figure out the creation, updates, and deletion of the resources for us, which is super nice. And you should know there are over 224 types of resources. So I cannot teach you all of them, right? But any resource have the, the following form. They're AWS, then the product name, and then the data type name. So usually reading this identifier, you're able to figure out what we're going to create. So how do I find all these resources documentation? Well, there is this great link that has all of them, so I can't teach you, you know, all the resources, but I can teach you how to find a link that resources that, that shows them. And so then you just read the doc. And for example, we're going to read the doc together just for the EC2 instance, just to get a feeling for it. So the first web page I reference to you is called the AWS resource type references. And this contains all the references that are supported by CloudFormation. And the resource name uh, naming convention is here. And if you scroll down, you can see there are a lot of resources. Honestly, you could count them too many. So we can see that we can create a resource for pretty much everything. You know, let's scroll down and see if there is something we know. Yes, auto scaling. We know how to create auto scaling group. We're able to create auto scaling group, scaling policies, launch configuration, all through this CloudFormation resources. If we scroll down, we're able to do code build, code commit, code deploy, code pipeline. So all these things we've seen before, we're able to do them. And if we scroll down, we can see there is the EC2 instances, the Elastic IP, and then the security group. So let's have a look at EC2 instance because I think that's the one we're the most familiar with. So the AWS EC2 instance creates an EC2 instance because that's pretty obvious. Now, basically, we can scroll down and look at the syntax of how to declare this EC2 instance. We have a JSON form, which to me is a little bit unreadable, but we scroll down and we get the YAML form, which to me is much clearer. So this is the YAML form for an EC2 instance. It must be of type AWS EC2 and then instance, and it will have some properties. So when you create a resource, it must have a type, must have properties and properties are going to be key value pairs. So as you can see here, you can customize a lot of things for your EC2 instance. For example, if you wanted to customize the IAM instance profile, we click on this and we get teleported to the documentation for that. And it says, okay, you need a string. It's not required. And if you update this, there's no interruption. So that means that your EC2 instance won't get terminated and recreated it will just attach their instance profile to it. But if we change the image ID, for example, which is also a string, but not required, then we, in terms, if we update it, basically, it will do a replacement. That means that it will terminate the old instance and replace it with a new one. So let's go scroll back up. And so here we understand that there are so many things we can customize and to know what we should specify, we should just look through the documentation. Now, if we look at what we created from before, uh, let's just take an example as just EC2. We have an availability zone, an image ID, and an instance type. And so basically I knew how to fill those because if you click on AZ, then you see that you have to specify the name of the AZ where the instance is located. And so this is, this is quite great and you can just keep on going with this as much as you want. So now we understand basically how this was created. For fun, you could go into the resources here and see we have an EC2 instance, but also we have an EIP. And so if we look at EIP, so let's go back uh, one up and then search for EIP on this page. Here we go, we have EIP. Here we can see that the syntax is much shorter. We have an instance ID and a domain. And so the instance ID is what I have specified and the domain I have not specified. So here, when we go back to our EIP, we can see that, yeah, it makes sense. I did specify the type to be an AWS EC2 EIP. And in terms of properties, I only have specified the instance ID. We'll see what this ref means in a second, okay? But so the idea is that we are able to link the documentation to what we want to do. And so obviously for a security group, we need to provide uh, the security group rules for ingress traffic. 
And because we can have many rules, they're an array. So let's go to the security group documentation just to prove that point. Security group is right here. And we go to YAML. And if you look at security group ingress, we can see that is a list of Amazon EC2 group rules. And so if we click on EC2 group rule and we click on it, we go to YAML, we get all the parameters that are available. So going back to the syntax, we get this little hyphen here that defines it to be an array. And here we get the first rule. And here we get the second rule. And so yeah, what we get out of this is that you know, everything we configure through the UI can be written as code into your cloud formation templates. And this is how you know how to redact your cloud formation templates. So that's it for resources. That's honestly all you need to know. Um, just remember there's a type and there's properties and all of this goes below the block called resources. So you need to make sure there's a small indent underneath resources every time you declare a resource. Now the frequently asked questions for resources, can I create a dynamic amount of resources? No, you cannot. Everything in CloudFormation has to be declared so you cannot perform code generation. You cannot have dynamic type of code generation. And is every AWS service supported? The answer is almost. There's only a few small ones that are not there yet. And you can work around that using the AWS Lambda custom resources. Just a little bit of trivia here. Just need to know about it. We will not write to custom resources Lambda in this course. So that's it for resources. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope that makes more sense now. And I will see you in the next lecture.